Uh, well, good afternoon. I am Christina Henderson, Executive Director of the Montana High Tech Business Alliance. Welcome to our webinar, Creating a Better Employee Experience in COVID Times, a deep dive with Kendall Clifton Short. Uh, this event is part of a series that the Alliance is hosting with resources to help our communities deal with the impacts of current events. And you can find the details of all these sessions at mthitech.org slash events. Our presenter today, Kendall Clifton Short, is a partner at the global firm Within People and is based in Bozeman. Some of you may have joined us exactly two months ago on December 2nd for Kendall's previous presentation on creating a better employee experience in COVID times. If you missed it, don't worry, the recording is available on our website at mthitech.org slash webinars. And on the recording page, you can also find a link to Within People's latest ebook, Tactical Guide to Emerging Stronger from These Unprecedented, Uncertain, Fucked Up, Challenging Times. Language. Uh, and uh, actually expresses, though, what we are going through. Um, today's session is going to allow a little more time with a smaller group of us so we can go deeper into the principles that Kendall shared. Um, you can keep your microphones muted, but if you have something to say, turn those on or at Kendall's direction, uh, turn those on and speak. You can also communicate to with us through the chat. Uh, today's presentation will be recorded. Um, and we'll now turn the floor over to Kendall to get us started. Thanks, Christina. You, you framed the current situation that we're all living through beautifully, so thank you. It's great to be here again. It's also great to have an opportunity to sort of dive into how some of this might apply to your specific situation. So what today's really going to be all about is sort of rolling up our sleeves, having conversations about like what's going on in your business and how do we start thinking about um, keeping teams connected, creative and performing in this strange world that we're living in, um, in your specific business context. So if you're um, in a place to sort of have that discussion and, and sort of engage in some like, okay, what does this actually mean for me? Then that's great. If, if you're not, then that's okay too. You can join us at another time, but I'd love to see people um, cameras on if that's something that you uh, can manage. I don't care if there's kids in the background or, or whatever, like just let, let's just show up in whatever state we're here in, um, because that's definitely the way that you're gonna get the most out of today. So, um, you know, like here we are talking about uh, how, creating a better employee experience. So I, I guess as a way to kick us off, um, what I'd love is to, well, first of all, to get a sense of like, who's in the room, like did, so we've got Ashley, we've got Rain and we've got, is it Megan? Yeah, great. So if you just want to put your hand up, like did any of you join us exactly two months ago? <laughs> I didn't realize it was exactly. Did any of you guys, ladies, make it to that other session? I watched the recording, so I wasn't on the live session. Perfect, great. What about Ashley uh, or Megan? Did you, either of you watch the recording? I just want to, I'm just sort of trying to get a sense of like, where do I start? Do I start at the beginning or do I launch straight into things? Uh, no, I'm brand new to this organization. Um, and so I, this is my first time with the Montana Business Alliance. Well, welcome. Great. Well, okay, well, beautiful. So actually, um, yeah. Ashley and Megan. Okay, so let's just let's just start by having a bit of a like, okay, well, who are we? Where are we coming from? And um, what perhaps perhaps we could all share like what's been one of the unexpected challenges of COVID in your workplace context? So I'm Kendall, I'm a partner at Within People. We already had a pretty well set up, like we all work remotely, we don't have an office. So that that piece of it was easy for us. I think one of the unexpected challenges that we have had to manage is like the never ending nature of this and how do we manage our energy and support people who are also trying to manage their energy through this very extended crisis. So I'm gonna pass over to 
Emily, who's also here from Within People, she can share a little bit about herself and why this conversation matters and what she's seeing in terms of the impact of COVID. And then we'll go round the circle and then we'll dive in. Yeah, thank you, Kendall. So my name is Emily Shelton. I've been working with Within for approximately six months now, and we'll be stepping into a role um, really helping with recruitment strategy. Um, I love their work and I could gush over Kendall all day long, but that's not what we're here for. So I'll move forward. The thing that I've really noticed um, or that's been like really sticking with me is that feeling of, yeah, like Kendall said, it's it's never ending. There's no end date in mind. Um, a lot of the conversations that I'm having, I, I'm still hearing a year into this pandemic. Um, well, when this is over, we'll do blank. Um, and so that's been something that's been just really interesting and something like I, I'm ho hoping to continue to try to help coach these these conversations into a different mindset because we don't know. We don't know when this will be over and it's probably about time to take some action anyway. So yeah, right. that's, that's my big thing I've noticed. Yeah, thanks Emily. <laughs> what about you, Ryan? So I don't know. It's I mean, it's all weird and bizarre for us, right? But when we kind of went into lockdown, so I'm, I'm an HR director for a public accounting firm. Uh, we have six offices in Montana and I am in the Whitefish office along with our CEO, um, but our headquarters is in Great Falls. So, you know, when we went into lockdown, so to speak, um, we had, we were an essential business. So we still kind of operated with a smaller crew to keep it minimal in the office. Um, you know, we did a lot of planning with the executive management team, got input from the managers of each office, which one of my managers is here on the call, hey, Nicole. Um, and so we actually brought everyone back after Memorial Day, which was exciting because some people just needed it. Um, some people wanted it. And so we kind of put a plan into place that we thought would keep our employees safe, keep our clients safe. Um, and it's, it's done well. We've certainly had some issues. Um, and so from that perspective, we kind of returned to normal. What was missing really was that, um, that employee experience, the social aspect of the, um, the happy hours that we would do and just, just the the social aspect in general. And Nicole's really great with, with doing some of those things and virtual happy hours, but you can only do so many. And so, you know, we've tried to do a couple of different activities, um, but now that we're going back into a busy season where we're still trying to limit clients in the office and really focus on kind of less contact, it's still not going to be normal for our people that are used to sitting down with their clients. And um, so, you know, I, I don't know if that really truly answered the question. That's kind of where we stand, I guess. And so we're definitely looking forward to normal, but we're we're trying to come to terms with what we're working with. So yeah, that's great. And it's a really interesting perspective, isn't it? Because even if it kind of feels normal for us, is that the experience that our clients are getting? Is that's a, a interesting tension to hold. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Megan, do you actually maybe Nicole, you can build on that since you are uh, um, in the same organization. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would just add that the day to day with our staff experience has changed so dramatically, um, especially in the environment where we're working long hours. You know, it's it's one thing to do eight to five. It's another to do seven to eight, seven, you know, weekends and do all that from your home or a partial home situation, or just like locked in your office by yourself all the time. And I've, I've been doing this in public accounting tax seasons for, I don't know, 15 years, something like that. And it's just, there's something about the energy, the camaraderie that helps get us through that without being very creative and finding ways to actively connect, um, I think that it's just going to be harder for people. So I'm trying to pick up any little tips I can to keep our team connecting because that is just so key for us. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Thank you, Nicole. I think that's really it, what really stood out to me as well when you piggyback on what Emily and I were saying in terms of the duration of this and like Zoom fatigue and showing up to it, like happy hour was kind of novel on Zoom for the first couple of months on and now it just feels like another meeting in a back-to-back -back day of 10 or 11 hours of yeah, meetings. Yeah. Staff meeting. 
our, our staff meetings, you know, they're functional. We can get through absolutely what we need to get done, but they're not fun. And they used to be fun. Yeah. You know, it used to be something where we'd all enjoy spending that half an hour, 45 minutes together. And now it's, it's business. We exchange the information we think we need to, and then we can't wait to get off, which is not, it's not as great as it used to be. Yeah, great. So how do we transition back from functional to feeling like a worthwhile connection beyond the, yeah, the sort of exchange? Great. Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Megan, what about for you? Um, like I said, I'm relatively new to this organization specifically, but I'm definitely sensing COVID fatigue. Um, I'm in a bank, so our frontline folks have to be there in person every day for things to remain operational. And it feels like coverage is constantly an issue because of the same folks experiencing COVID restrictions, quarantines, illness related absences, and they're just exhausted and so frustrated with it. So keeping morale up amidst all of that is, has been really tough. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you very much. Lovely to have you here. Ashley, are you in a place where you can uh, turn your mic off and speak or is that going to be tricky for you? Sorry. Um, Ashley, is, are you in a place where you can turn your mic off and speak? Maybe not. What about um, Laurie? Are you in a place where you could turn your mic off and just share some of your sort of why? Why are we showing up to this um, conversation? Why does it feel important? And what are some of the unexpected challenges of COVID that you're navigating at your workplace? Um, I work for a community college, and. Um, I guess I was looking to see, listen for ideas to keep things lively. I think uh, I run a oversee an admissions team. We just try to have a lot of fun and upbeat and have daily check-ins or weekly check-ins. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. And like there was, it wasn't really a specific question, just really just an exploration of like, well, what, what are we dealing with? So we can start to problem solve that together. Today's really hopefully an opportunity for us to start rethinking how we shape an employee experience in this strange time that we are finding ourselves in. So this is really just a like, hey, let's actually right. get to know the context that we're showing up and working in. So yes, you answered well, my question perfectly. Thank yeah, you. But if yeah, you have well, more to add, I'd love to hear it. Sure. Um, I think as the year has progressed, um, it was interesting and fun. You know, you got your dogs, your cats, you got all kinds of things happening in your space. And every one of us were dealing with different things. Some had their 11 year old sitting at their table with them or showing the rabbit ears behind their head. <laughs> um, and I think you have to go with the flow. I think as it's gone on, there's been some frustration. Um, and I think that lack of disconnect not being part of a team is the concern. We're human beings, we need contact and how, this is like being on a stage. <laughs> you feel like your hair's gotta be right. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I think each of us have had different levels of adjustment. Yeah, great, thank you. And so what we're really hearing is like, how do we keep it fun? How do we stay feeling connected to people beyond the transaction? And how does, how do we, um, move through the marathon when the novelty of having our cat and our 11 year old at work has worn off. Christina and Martina, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, I think, okay. <laughs> I think that um, Kendall, what you were saying at the beginning about um, trying to manage your energy. Um, I feel like I've really been identifying with that. I think, especially um, these, most recent weeks and months. I think that um, Christina and I, like at the Montana High Tech Business Alliance have been thinking and having conversations about how we can try to, um, you know, create those connections through, um, you know, is there a way where we can make connections that feel authentic, um, like through events like this. Um, and especially just like, 
um, missing that social aspect and when everyone does kind of have less bandwidth, um, like, like we've been talking about how to reconcile that. Beautiful, great, thank you. Uh, builds, Christina? Uh, yeah, so we've, um, in some ways it's been kind of cool to shift our organization online. I think there were things that we had never done or tried before when we could just meet in person by default that we were forced to do in COVID and it's opened up like new services for our members. So now we have all these sorts of online events um, and being in Montana where everybody's geographically very spread out, it's allowed a lot, a lot more people to participate and engage that otherwise wouldn't be able to. And, and we do a lot more events. And um, so I think that's something that we'll keep afterward and um, for my team so Martina and I are the two full-time staffers and then we have a bunch of part-time folks and for them it's been very convenient so like a lot of them are college students and so when they go home for break we have two members in Vermont and Seattle that are just working away and so um, that flexibility has been nice and I think that's something that we'll keep going forward as well um, the you know, in the summer, we were able to do staff lunches outside and socially distanced. And so that was nice for a time, but now it's winter and we can't. So we do like Zoom lunches and it's it's okay, but there's it's a real bummer. And Martina and I started working together uh, last March, right after the pandemic hit. So she and I have never gotten to be in the same office and like just chat about stuff throughout the day. So I'm like super eager to like get through this and just get to have that like colleague dynamic again. And for me personally, like related to managing energy, um, the like work-life balance is terrible for me. So I like, I'm in my house right now and I can just like zip down to my computer and keep working at night and, um, that's not really cool. <laughs> and, and also, I have not slept well since last March. And it's like, and I, and I feel from other people too, that's just collective exhaustion. And I worry about our mental health and like even what resources are available to help with that. And it's like the whole world's dealing with it. So it feels a little bit um, like I don't have a right to complain because everybody's in this together. And yet, I can't deny that I'm dealing with sleep issues or, um, you know, wrestling with how long can I keep this up? Yeah, and that really creates interesting um, conundrums we find ourselves too. Like I'm desperately craving authentic connection, but if I really bring the whole of my authentic self and my vulnerability, is that like professional or is that helpful? And sort of what, what really does that mean for people? Okay, thank you for everyone for sharing, um, especially so vulnerably, especially when we've just got here. So <laughs> let's dive into going great. We all agree that there are some key themes here, managing our energy, um, authentic connection, bringing or maintaining creativity and, um, you know, like these things are showing up in lots of different ways for lots of all, all of us. So um, I'm Kendall Clifton Shaw. Christina gave me a great introduction. I don't feel like I need to um, provide any more context for, for who I am and who within is. But I guess really this conversation that we're having is we're having in the context of the world is changing, right? We've done business, many of us, a, a certain way for a fair period of time and for many of us like that's just not possible anymore so whether we want to be having this conversation and this this situation that we find ourselves it is it is the way that things are, are shaping up and whether it's a global pandemic or whether it's the impacts of climate change or whether it's like generational change in the workplace and stuff it doesn't really like there are so many different trends if you like or or things that are happening in the world that really our um 
like challenge and opportunity and responsibility as leaders is to build organizations and teams that are adaptive and impact focused and how can we, our work within is really around how can we unleash the collective potential of the people who work in our teams so that we can all collectively solve tomorrow's problems today and so that's I guess a little bit about what we're trying to do and then if I just share my screen for a second too I, this is a way for um us to think about what we do, I guess, if it's helpful. Um, I don't want this one, I want this one. So for us, like all of our work at Within is really around supporting 21st century organizations to reimagine success. So, you know, before, or bef like uh, the, the typical way we think about success is more profitability, but that's just not always the goal for organizations anymore, and nor, nor do they want it to be. Like we can't just keep more, 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 right? So, so let's not assume that that's the goal. It's, it, it may be, it may not be. So really understanding what success looks like for an individual organization and then how they can go on a journey of clarity, belief and confidence to realize that um, ambition. And so the work we do is really about like clarity is around defining or languaging like why you're even in business and what values the way that you work that are going to drive adaptation and evolution and really create the experience that people are going to want to come and have with you. Um, believe once we have that clarity about who we are and how we operate and what we stand for, clarity is all about sort of defining or languaging sorry sorry <laughs> belief is really all about like how do we attract people how do we live that how do we believe that that's who we are how do we develop our employer brand how do we embed and attend to culture how do we use rituals and practices so that we can show up as a high performing team whether we're all in the same office with our clients coming to visit us or whether we're all in remote offices because that's what the world is demanding of us in that in that moment and then confidence is really about like how do we have the skill and confidence to lead our teams in this way to lead a 21st century business where leadership doesn't have to be hierarchical if it doesn't serve us where um, growth and success doesn't have to be about more if we don't if it doesn't if we don't want it to be where we really are creating an organization where diverse talent can find a home and help you know the people running the business realize that success whatever it looks like so in our world like culture is absolutely the most strategic investment that any organization can make and the research more and more is um, showing this to be true too and so if um if we believe culture is the most strategic investment and we're committed to designing a workplace culture, whether that's in person or, or a hybrid model or, or virtual, that fosters trust and strengthens connections and allows us to benefit from the gifts that a diverse set of people can bring to the table, then, um, you know, I guess today is really about starting to have a conversation about like, well, so how do we do that? So, um, we can only do that work in the context of our own business organization which is why i think it's really important for me not just to talk at you about this but for you to actually apply some of these concepts to your own landscape and really set you on a path of making investments in your culture that are going to be like meaningful and transformational so what we really want to do today is have a thought provoking exploration into how you can rethink the ways of working in your business that drive culture in a remote or hybrid environment. And then, okay, so if that's, if that's how we're now thinking about it, what changes might you start to make that are going to serve the long term growth of your people and your business. How does that sound? I'll assume that I can see a few thumbs up. So that's fabulous. Great. Okay. Um, ask questions. I want you to feel like Emily and I are here to absolutely serve you. So if you don't understand something that I'm talking about or that Emily's talking about, tell us and we'll unpack it for you. Or if you have, if you want to go further into something too, like that's how today is designed. Like let's make this as meaningful as you can. I mean, there'll be questions at the end too, but like don't wait till the end if you've got a question. 
So um, I, I think I'll just, because only a couple of you were here last time or have watched the video, let me just whiz through like, yes, we have a global pandemic that we're living in, but there's also some like a bigger global trends that are that we're on the precipice of and that are already impacting us. And so this conversation really, yes, is about how we respond to this like never, seemingly never ending crisis, but also is about how we respond to what's happening in the world around us. So obviously many of us have moved to remote and many of us have moved to hybrid models. 20% of us think that we're gonna continue working remotely in some way where, and so then that's creating opportunities to talk about, well, do we even need our expensive office place? And that requires us to all coalesce around a certain location. Is there a different way we could organize ourselves in terms of location and coming together, et cetera. So this, this, this forced, um, working from home model, I think has really, like before lots of organizations were like, oh no, we can't work from home. We're not either set up or we don't trust our people and stuff, and, but we can't, we can't use those as excuses anymore. So two things are happening. One, the organizations are rethinking, well, do we need to invest in all this infrastructure to support people being at home? But also employees are thinking like, well, do I have to drive? Not necessarily in postman, but do I have to drive a long time to get to work? And is that something that I wanna keep committing to doing? We also have obviously had a big um, conversation that was still in the middle of it about um, changing priorities and changing demographics. I think our election has just really shown how things are changing in the suburbs and in the cities and stuff. Specific to COVID, we have seen all the gains we've made about equity in women's pay and equity in um, opportunities for women on boards and in leadership of big corporations, et cetera, they're slowly being eaten away. Like women, particularly women of colour, have been more likely to have been laid off or furloughed because of COVID or voluntarily stepped out of the workplace too because of commitments around childcare and stuff. And then there's this big DEI conversation that we're all trying to navigate, like what if even is racism? How does it apply to our conversation? And, and what does creating a truly diverse and equitable employee experience, even when we live in, a, you know, rural Montana, many of us where there aren't very many people of color, is this a conversation that we need to be engaging with? Is like, how does this, what does this mean for us? Like all of these types of questions are being asked across organizations, absolutely in Montana, but all across the country. So, and, and this is a new conversation for many organizations. We also seeing th different things happening in the workforce where by 2025, we're expecting 30, 6% of the workforce to be Gen Z, 43% of the workforce to be millennials, 21% of the workforce to be Gen Z. I might have said them before, but you can read it and you can see what I mean. Like, and, and the interesting thing here is that all of those groups of um, workers, if you like, they have slightly different values and slightly different priorities and slightly different things that they want out of work. And so we're seeing really interesting things showing up where, you know, what what matches with what the baby boomers expect from people doesn't match up with some of the younger groups of generations of what they are looking from work. And so how do we marry all of these sort of seemingly at odds um, priorities and values to be a really powerful diverse workforce is a really interesting question that many organizations are exploring. AI, like that, again, in the tech industry, this is a really big piece of the puzzle. And obviously there's a lot of fear and rhetoric around like, oh, we don't want AI, they're gonna steal all our jobs. And it's like, well, maybe, but like, what if we actually design to use AI in the way that they really are strong and allow us humans who have the humanity to do the things that we do really well too. What if we actually saw some mutual benefit to that as opposed to just like some stealing of jobs and stuff, but like manufacturing and tech and um, supply chain management stuff. These are all industries that are on the brink, I guess, or already being radically disrupted by AI. And so how do we, how do we ride that train and, and get on that bus and go with that and benefit from it is a really interesting question. 
And then of course, like we all spoke around this before, like what does this mean for our own personal ability to show up and be resilient, especially when this thing like, okay, yes, we're still talking about COVID, but when COVID's done, it's gonna be wildfires or it's gonna be um, hurricanes or it's gonna be this or it's gonna be that. Like, it just feels like we're on this roller coaster of always having more asked of ourselves. And so how do we build resilience in ourself and how do we build resilience in our team so that we can continue to show up and perform and feel like we have a contribution to make and not be impacted mental health wise, which is obviously another huge, big um, issue and um, elephant, if you like, in some organizations. We don't need to talk about that because we just talked about that. So let me just, I, obviously I just sort of whizzed through that quickly. Does anyone have any questions on any of those trends that they want to ask about or comments or observations before we keep moving. Something that I just thought was super interesting because I don't see anyone else um, raising their hand is just that one of the things that I had read was that Gen Z is supposed to be very similar to baby boomers in terms of what they want out of their career. And I just thought that that was so interesting that it's kind of like a little cycle. Like they, they're very salary oriented. They want, they want to make their money. They want to, they like want a certain to follow a certain set of rules. And it's just kind of interesting the way that that's, that's circled back to baby boomers. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's really like, gosh, I've got to like think about all these competing things that people want in my workforce. I really am really striving to put something that feels valuable, but like this group of people who doesn't think that's valuable, like that's a big task for sort of HR professionals and leaders of organizations anyway, to try and wade through. So I just see a couple of extra people who've joined us, um, Deborah, maybe, and Ben, welcome. Um, we're sort of having a quick drive through about how we think about redesigning our employee experience and then we're going to dive into like okay so what does this mean for um, you all in your own business context so this is very much supposed to be interactive if people have questions or comments I'm going to be calling on people in a, in a minute well not really because that's terrifying for people but um yeah like the more you can obviously jump in and contribute uh and apply this to your own context, then please, that's that'll be great. Okay, so let's uh, keep moving. So here we have basically the summary of what 2020 really highlighted. We we had to solve these two problems collectively as organizations. How do like we have a new paradigm of flexibility that we're working in. If we didn't think that we could work from home because we didn't trust people to actually show up or we were worried about collaboration and productivity, we were really grappling with how do we get people working safely and collaborating at, the, at their best. And then in light of the Black Lives Matter conversations, there was this other conversation that was also happening at the same time around equality. So how do we even understand what equity means and how is that different? How is equality different to equal and what is inclusivity and what does diversity mean? What are even all of those words? How, why, do, why are they important to our conversation or our workplace? And really we were sort of grappling with this question, how do we create an inclusive workplace where everybody can thrive? And yes, absolutely race was on the top of the draw card for that, but but it, but it was also much greater too. How do we understand how gender plays a role? How do we um, understand how sexuality plays a role? How do we understand how like whether we have kids or we don't have kids plays a role and whether those kids are little and whether those kids are, are, are big because all of a sudden all these things were in our workplace because we were working from home and stuff. So where that sort of took us is you know, we are being asked to, it's being required of us to reimagine our workplaces as flexible, flexible, connected cultures. You know, if there's anything that people want, and we've all spoke to it at the beginning, it's to still feel connected, even though we're hopelessly disconnected, right? And we also all want to feel valued as individuals and contributors. So we, we really have to reimagine how we attract and retain talent. We have to start um, making promises around shared purpose and the opportunity to make 
a difference that is really what people are looking for rather than just the opportunity to take home a salary. Because before, maybe the opportunity to take home a salary was limited to the people in our region, but now really we can earn a salary from many different places across the, the nation, if not the world. And so how do we stay relevant and interesting to the people looking for work and investing in a, a employment opportunity? And so for us, these two shifts are really the foundation of what growing a diverse and equitable 21st century organization looks like. And so the way that we have been supporting organizations to rethink their employee experience was really to look at these four lenses. So, and this really allows us to have a DEI conversation as well as it's appropriate because we can bring a DEI lens to all of these different um, bubbles, if you like. So as um, individuals, we are looking like we are required to um, think about how we can promote flexible, like we all want some flexibility in our work. That was true before COVID. But as employers, we had more ability to say no to that, that we don't have anymore. We all want to feel connected. Okay, happy hour was serving us at the virtual happy hour was serving us at the beginning, we heard it's not necessarily serving us in the same way now. So how what do we replace that with? How do we um, have people feel connected? How do we reward people for their contribution in a way that's not always just more money, right? Because there's a limit, um, there's, a, there's a ceiling on what we can pay people. Sometimes that ceiling is like in our mind, but sometimes it's reality too. So how do we reward people for the contribution they're making? And how do we keep people growing, especially when we're talking about different generational needs? I, many, many, many of the younger generation, they want to feel like their organization is investing in their growth and that can look like heaps of different things too. So if they're the sort of four lenses that we need to think about when we're designing our employee experience or tweaking our employee experience, if we just unpack that a little bit more, flexibility is really the core question we're trying to answer as leaders is how do we build trust and belonging through our culture? You know, many organizations who were saying, no, we can't, you can't work from home. We don't think you'll work. We've proven that productivity is just as high, if not higher, when we're all working from home. What's gone down, unfortunately, is creativity, which is a huge red flag as we're trying to navigate different problems. But we've just blown the belief out of the water that if we're at home, we're actually mucking around, sitting on the couch, watching Netflix. Connected really is, uh, we're trying to answer this question, how do we create an open and transparent culture? So how do we foster belonging? And how do we sort of move towards radical transparency so that people feel like they have what they need and the trust that they need to step in and do their best work? Rewarding is really like, how do we reward people for their contribution? Now, how do we recognize them for being a cultural ad as well as a like productivity um, ad is a really interesting question. And, and what's really at the core of this is how do we engage people in work that feels meaningful to them? Because that is going to drive um, like intrinsic reward as well as motivating them with extrinsic reward. And then growing is like, how do we see the growth of individuals as a really key aspect of us growing our own business? So how do, can we support the personal growth of people in a way that's equitable and individual um, so that people feel like, yep, great, I'm on this journey, the company's investing in me and I'm investing in them. And this is really the, the frame, I guess, the framework that we use to examine all of these lenses. So. Before COVID, many organizations were like, come and work for us. We do free lunch. We've got a ping pong table. We've got a sleep pod if we were in um, San Francisco. Like we're very much like throwing perks at them. And so that, that's great until we are all forced to work at home. We can't go into the beautiful office. We can't eat the free lunch. We can't play ping pong when we're having a break. And so all of the things that were connecting, keeping me, wanting to work for this particular place are irrelevant now. So rather than um, what can we give people, what can we use to sort of pull people towards us, there's a real opportunity to have a shift of like, well, what can we promise them and what can they promise us in return? So we, we're moving from a like, 
we'll give you this to like, hey, what, how, what, where's the mutual benefit here? How can we both feel like this is a good fit for us? And then so if so when we're doing this unpack for ourselves this is sort of the the way that we're going to look at it what what are we promising or what have we been promising or maybe have we shifted to sorry what were we offering in terms of a perk what might be the shift to a promise and what does that mean for how we reimagine each of those four areas flexible rewarding growing and um, connected so we're going to go into let me just all talk to you again. Okay, we're going, let me unpack like flexible and connected because they're kind of um, related. And then we're going to split into two groups. Half of you will stay here with me. Half of you are going to a breakout room for Emily. And we're going to actually ask these questions of ourselves in the context of our own business. Does that sound good? Great. Okay. So um, if we look at, Let's just have some examples of like bring ground the theory into, pra uh, into practice, I guess. So when we're thinking about flexible, okay, this is like how do we build trust and connection across the organization? So the promises over perks, maybe the perks at the beginning were like, well, we have a working from home policy giving you the option to work from home when you choose, if you sort of ask, for, like request it and it gets approved. Now that's like, that's the perk of coming to work for us. We've got a flexible work from home policy. The promise might be, the translation of that into a promise might be, hey, we trust our people to do their best work. So you decide where you're gonna work and you decide when you're gonna work, but, and then our expectation is that you get the work done and that you self-organize to, with the people in the organization that you need to get together with to collaborate to achieve your goals. Okay, so quite, radically different approaches and if one feels closer to where you are and one feels like for some people like oh yeah I can see that that feels good we could do that tomorrow and other people's like wow that's a radically big shift that feels really uncomfortable both responses are totally fine this is about your evolution as an organization and and there's no like well you have to be able to go this far or you have to be willing to go this far for it to be effective like any shift sort of along that continuum of how do we reimagine a perk into a promise and then what does that mean for us is progress, right? So let's just get rid of any expectations of exactly how far we need to go. When we go to connected, okay, maybe the, the perk was come and work for us. We've got Slack, we've got Miro, we've got all these tools to help you collaborate, but really you're just writing to each other on the computer. And then the translation of that into a promise might be like, hey, we share information openly and come together in ways that create belonging. And we have these rituals that bring people together and we expect everybody to participate in those rituals that build connection and um, keep us uh, connected on a less transactional level. So maybe we have participate participate participatory decision-making. Maybe we're trying to flat out, flatten out some hierarchy. Maybe we're like understanding the power dynamics in our business and how we can reduce the um, power dynamic. And this is a really interesting conversation in the context of the DEI conversation, obviously. And that if, if I just sort of use us as an example, we have lots of cultural rituals. We're pretty good at that. One thing that we have recently started doing, we're sort of self organized we're organized into regional hubs naturally. And then we've started self-organizing into pods that um, are around like a specific thing that we ha have energy for. A couple of people come together in a pod, they work on something that's that they have energy for. And then when the outcome is realized, then that pod disappears and doesn't need to come back together. So what we found then when we started doing this was like, me and Emily are in this pod over here talking about X, Y, and Z, and that's great. And then some other people are in this pod over here having a, a different conversation that's kind of related. And then some other people in this pod having a conversation that's also kind of related, but none of us know what the other pod is talking about, but we know it's kind of relevant. And we don't want to be in that pod because that doesn't seem like good use of our time or strategic, or we just don't have energy for the whole conversation. And so we were bumping up against, okay, 
we don't know what's going on well enough in some of these pods. So our the opportunity for us is like, how do we bring some radical transparency to everybody so that everybody knows what's happening in each pod without them having to come to the meeting or without us having to have another meeting to discuss what we talked about in the meeting, which just seems like a complete waste of time. So you, you can see how these, um, like there's always opportunity to continue to evolve the process. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just this collective commitment to building rituals around feeling connected in, in um, legitimate ways. Any questions or observations? Christina, can you um, let us do a breakout room? Can you do that um, magically in the background or not really? Doesn't matter if you can't. Do you, can have um, so I have the breakout room function in it. I can just create two breakout rooms. Um, and you want me to assign automatically and see if it ends um, up assigned manually? Why don't you just make one breakout room, assign manually and put half the group in that one. I'll stay here with the group. Emily can go in the other one with half okay. of the group. And okay. we'll spend like maybe seven or eight minutes. Let's see. Unpacking this for everybody. Um. And if it's easier just to make me the host, you can do that too. If it will let me, let me see. Um, add a, oh, no, I don't wanna do that. Delete. Okay. All right, here we go. So um, Kendall's staying here. Emily is going. Okay, and we have yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, here we go. Um, okay, so are you staying here? Me? So just go, yeah, to, that way you can bring everyone back when we've had enough time. I'm, I'm not on the list, so I assume I'll stay. Yeah, yeah great. Okay, so. Um, so go into your breakout rooms, just have a conversation and have a think about like, in terms of these two ideas, how do we create flexible workplaces and how do we keep people connected? What are the perks that perhaps we have been operating or what are the perks that underpin the premise of how we operate and how might we, what might be the natural evolution of that perk into a promise and what, what would that mean for how we're reimagining our organization? Clear as mud? Okay, and how much time would you like to spend in the rooms? About eight minutes, please. Eight minutes, okay. I'm gonna click open and hope that it works. <laughs> Here we go, Perfect. guys. Okay, welcome back. I hope you didn't have um, your sentence cut off quickly in the middle rudely of something very inspirational that you were saying. Emily, just share a couple of the um, things that felt important in your conversation. Yeah, thank you. So um, in, in looking at flexibility, I think the major perk that we've all experienced right this year is, is the ability to offer remote work. Um, although Megan did share some insight that, you know, depending on what industry you're working within, maybe you're not able to offer remote work. Maybe you need all of your employees to show up. So we, we kind of ch chatted about what that would look like. Is it, you know, offering alternate shift options? Maybe it's you can do four tens instead of doing the five eights, kind of thinking about it in that way. But then we we decided to move forward into the conversation of, of what this promise would look like. So um, just setting clear expectations and saying, um, you know, that you have the ability to work from home or, or choose your own shift, but these are the expectations that we have for you. And, and what expectations do you have for us when entering into this, um, entering into this space? So then in thinking about it on acid or the, the reimagination of what this would look like um, would be, you know, self-management? Is it is it you bringing your productivity to your manager and saying like, this is what I was able to accomplish and this is why I should be able to continue to work from home. Um, 
So yeah, we had some really great conversations about that. Something else we talked about was the promise of safety that we should be able to promise if our employees are sh showing up to work in person that we can promise them a safe environment. Um, so that was a really interesting note from, from Megan there. And then Deborah wanted to share with us, you know, it is, um, it's hard as a manager to balance all of these, uh, all of the different needs that people have. And one bad apple, sometimes we have a bad apple that comes along and as a manager, it's easier to make a broad sweeping decision um, after that experience than to work through the, those like rough tidbits. So that was just something to keep in mind. And, and I really appreciated that input as well. Um, I think it's just setting a matter of setting clear expectations. Yeah, we had a really interesting conversation about expectations too, right? Because Christina's point was like before flexibility of working from home and stuff was something you earned when you have had proven your trust, right? And now it's like the given, right? So how do we how do we make the expectations clear? Is it our obligation as the leaders to set them or is our promise that we'll like get in the ring and make them with you and make them in a way that really like serves you and like, you keep pushing that envelope further and reimagining that might be like, well, you bring to me like what expectations you think that you want to have of me and let's work out whether that's going to be reasonable and how, how do we design that in a way that like everyone gets to sort of set that, but yet it's not total chaos because everyone's expectations are different and how are we designing for like the person with the greatest needs and then retrofitting as needed as opposed to designing for the masses and then, you know, making accommodations for this person who has children or making accommodations for this person who can't do blah, 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 or is in a wheelchair or something. So yeah, great. The other thing that we spent a lot of time was talking around was technology, right? And so if a perk is like, hey, we've got great technology and um, you know, you can have all the latest tech here, maybe the promise is actually like, we promise to provide you the support and the infrastructure to actually use the tech well, because that's sometimes a totally different thing. And then you push that even further is like, how do, how do you people who are using this technology actually work out what support you need or what, what technology you'd like to use and how, how we could train you in that and, and what our commitment from, what the commitment that you can expect from us could be. Great, okay, well, let's talk about rewarding and growing and unpack that in the context of our own as well, um, ourselves as well. So rewarding, let us let us remember, is really like, how do we reward our people for the contribution they're making to fulfilling our ambition or growing our um, company in the whatever growth looks like for us? So a perk might be we pay in the top percentile, we have a generous bonus scheme and we offer equity um, based on hitting targets, right? So that's great if you can afford to do those things, but not every organization can obviously pay in the top quarter and not every um, organization has equity to offer their organizations. So perhaps uh, the promise is actually we celebrate diversity and recognize and reward people based on how they add value to our culture. So let's actually shift away from targets and um, uh, like qu quotas, et cetera. Um, and then uh, another promise and sort of radically think about culture ad, right? And how do we even make clear? So this then requires us, like how do we make clear like what, what a culture ad is? Like what, what would we be looking for in terms of how you add to culture? And how do we perhaps translate our values into clear like performance metrics? There's some really interesting things that we can do that there too. So then if we sort of push that even further, like perhaps there's an ownership model for an organization that can't offer equity, perhaps there's an opportunity for ownership, perhaps there's an opportunity rather than the one person earning commission, perhaps actually it's our collective um, results that get rewarded rather than the individual results. And perhaps like what does the role of feedback play here too in terms of like how do we see feedback as a really key mechanism to keep us growing as individuals and us growing as an organization and that is actually embedded into the 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 way that we set our culture up if we think about growing sometimes we have here perks as like hey you can have 20 percent of your time devoted to learning and or perhaps you like we give you a budget like go spend it on whatever learning you want i know some local companies do that 
And so that's great if you can afford to do that. And sometimes the companies we sort of wheel out when we talk about this, like it actually supports their business model to do this. You think about Google, the more time we have creating our own like passion projects the more things we have to offer into the workplace as an organization so but again it's just not possible especially for some smaller organizations to say like a bank right well go spend 25 20 percent of your time doing whatever you like it's like that just doesn't work right so maybe the promise is we'll support you on your own personal growth journey and back you to achieve goals we have this structure in place that actually you're on this learning journey and we'll we'll support you um, or maybe maybe the promise is like we'll commit to you working out what a good work-life balance is, which is a really interesting conversation in the context of like, well, I'm kind of working from my living room table with the chaos going on around me. And to Christina's point, and I've got this really bad habit of just logging onto my computer all the time. So how do we have those, con- how do we commit promise to our employees that this is a conversation we are going to be having and commit and commit to coming back to until we've sort of solved it? When we sort of reimagine that even further, maybe it's personal growth plans, maybe it's like wellness coaching or mentorship, or maybe it's like, yeah, I get I get to design my own, I, I get to sort of like pitch what I think will grow me in the context of this business. Any questions? Great. Okay, Christina, pop us back into the, the breakout rooms. We'll unpack like what promises were, sorry, what perks were we perhaps offering? How have we either shifted already or might we shift that to a promise? And then let's see if we can push that even further. Okay, then about how many minutes in these breakouts? Um, yeah, let's bring it, us back again in eight minutes. Eight minutes, all right, we'll do. All right, welcome back. I don't know how your conversation was, Emily, but we had a really energizing conversation in our group where we were talking around, um, you know, mostly reward, but like, is it monetary or like how, how do we, um, there was two parts to it. First of all, like, well, what if we stopped thinking about reward being only about monetary and like really started playing with like, well, what if, the reward was like getting to like work on things that you were really energized by or or getting you to design your own impact and perhaps having your reward tied to that or perhaps not. And then the other piece of that too was how do we reimagine the the sort of collective goal and we get stuck in this trap of like, hey, we promise to, the, the, the perk is like, hey, achieve your benchmarks and then you get this money, but perhaps the benchmarks actually aren't the right drivers of the impact that we want to have at a high level. And so inadvertently, we're rewarding people for the things that prevent us from achieving the impact we want as an organization. So the promise could be something like, how do we reorganize around, um, you know, collective goals as a first step, and then even pushing that further, like, how do we actually have a conversation and even try and understand how we achieve the collective impact that we're committed to in, in theory. So yeah, how about you, Emily? What were some things oh, that stood out in that conversation for you? First of all, super cool conversation. That's that's awesome that y'all were able to get there. Um, we, were, we were talking about, first of all, how um, compensation in Montana is a little difficult to talk about. If we're, if we're switching to remote work, um, our wages aren't necessarily as competitive as they are in, say, California. So are we, um, are we wanting to focus on compensation as a reward, first of all? And then uh, Rain had something really interesting to share with us. This is something that she's actually working through right now. Um, and they just had uh, a compensation philosophy conversation across the board as a company where they had real transparency moments about, hey, this is why so-and-so is getting this certain bonus. This is where this pay structure lies and being completely open about it as, as a business. Um, and from there, they were able to create like a visual um, career path that they're able to share out to their employees that show um, like where you are and where you're going. So that was super exciting to, to be chatting about. Um, and then thinking about growing, we, we did chat a little bit about like that, um, the education piece and, and having that be an opportunity for a business to come alongside you in that way. But Rain said one of their things is like, one of their issues that they run into is that they have this, this ability or the, the reward or the, we will pay for your education piece, but it's not necessarily being like 
being used. Like this, uh, employees are kind of hesitant to actually grab that. So then we talked about like, well, is that, is that how we want to be leveraging this? Do you maybe want to, as a company, instead of saying like, here's this piece, good luck with it. Do we want to come alongside and offer a sort of mentorship program where you have somebody that's really checking in with you on your growth path? Um, so yeah, really, really interesting conversations and uh, exciting stuff going on in, in her business. Yeah, like your last point, we sort of had that too. Like Christina's in the same situation. We have this budget, but no one seems to be using it and stuff. And so perhaps that's not actually what they want. Perhaps that's not, perhaps perhaps there's actually some other promise that we can make that is actually more valuable and actually more helpful. So great. Okay, well, I'm glad everyone seems to have had a really powerful conversation. So in a nutshell, because we are rapidly running out of time here, this is the framework again. How do we really reimagine our employee experience through these three, four, sorry, I can count, bubbles? Like people want flexibility. They want to feel connected. They want to be rewarded in a way that is meaningful for them, all of these things. And, and they want to be on this journey of growth and feel like their employer, particularly younger generations, that in, is investing in them as individuals so we've had you've all, like the conversations that I've been a part of it sounds like Emily's group too you've already started to loosen up like well what are we doing and what are some of the shifts that we could make which is really a key piece of this that I guess the recipe if you like I would suggest is like get really clear on the cultural context for your organization. And what I really mean by that is like, why do people come and work for you? Because to Emily's point, when we're all working from home, why wouldn't I go work for someone in Silicon Valley when I can earn a Californian wage instead of Montana, a Montana wage? So what is it about your organization that makes people want to come and work for you, right? And start to examine that question in the context of promises that you're making people rather than the perks that you're offering so once you have really clear like why us like what's attractive about us what is it about our employee experience that would make people want to come and stay and add value and grow our company with us what are then the promises that we can start to make with them or to them and what are the promises that they make in return and once you have that really clear you're in a great position to start going okay what needs to shift where we're here where do we need to go to and what's going to get us there so what are the sort of action steps if you like that you need to be taking to drive um, or to show up to the promises or to drive a more like equitable workplace and as Christina mentioned, we've recently written a book um, so that lots of this you can find go into more depth if you want. Um, so it's really talks about like how do we bring use purpose to bring direction in uncertainty? How do we humanize leaders so we can humanize the workplace? And how do we reimagine an equitable employee experience? So that's the book, right? So there's a whole chapter devoted to this conversation that we've just had. But as a way to just close out, um, I'd love to hear from everyone like what's one thing that's landed for you today and what's something that you're excited to do now because of this conversation. Nicole, do you feel like kicking us off? Gosh, I was just looking through all my good notes here. <laughs> um, I, I really want to, for our office, try to reframe and take to the next step some of the perks to promises. I, I think that's a possibility. And I think it's something that would really help people engage more functionally and be really good for us. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, Megan. Agreed. Yeah, framing it um, or taking those perks and then framing it in a different way or being more intentional about how that drives your culture um, would be very valuable. Great. Thank you. Rain. Did you serve me? Sorry. Um, I kind of like what Nicole said. I, I feel like we have a lot of great perks. And I think for us, it's going to be reimagining some of it. And I've got some other ideas and I can't wait to talk with Nicole about this. But, um, you know, I think we have a lot of great things to offer and it's really just showcasing it. Plus some things that we already have in the works with the 
progression that I talked about. It hasn't officially been rolled out, so it's still in its you know prime, um, but just really kind of taking it to the next level and. I think the engagement piece, you know, kind of like you said, getting a clear picture on what our culture context is, if we really look at that, um, and maybe even sharing it with the rest of our management team, just to kind of get this mindset, because, you know, at the end of the day, we all have to work, we're all doing the work, but, you know, to Nicole's point of like, um, and I think that this was in the last group, but the meaningful work, getting them to do what they want, maybe assigning mentors, or I just have all these ideas in my head that can really kind of take what we're doing to the next level, take what we're already doing, but to the next level. Yeah, and that's the conversation, isn't it? Like, how do we constantly continue to evolve what we're doing so that it um, moves us closer to what, what we're doing? And I think your, your point about like, hey, perhaps we should involve the rest of the management team here is absolutely essential because, you know, sometimes HR is given the job of like going and finding this great talent and sharing these promises that we're making then if they then come and the experience of working for them is not what they feel like was promised because not no one beyond the HR team is is on board with this as a way of being then we, we can't keep them and stuff so yeah really the more buy-in we can get across the organization and the more people we can have be having these conversations about like well how are we showing up to this promise and when are we like kicking the ball out of the park and when are we actually not doing a good enough job yeah thanks Deborah so I came kind of late to the conversation so I'm just pretty much spending my time processing what everyone has said but um Rain had mentioned that she had gone back and watched one of the recordings and so that's definitely on my to-do list Great. Okay. Well, I'm glad you could join us. Don't worry about being late. Like Christina's really great at recording things and handing them out. So yeah. And then obviously the slide deck, everybody can have too. But like, this is the world that we live in. If anyone wants to have any more conversations about culture, I'm always up for them. If you want to like throw a few ideas that have spun out of this conversation onto the table and help me work through them, then Emily and I are here for that type of support and we love having those types of conversations so Christina like thanks to everyone for like rolling your sleeves up and getting your hands dirty I know this is a different kind of experience but in my mind absolutely the way that we start to apply this stuff to our own context so yeah thanks for joining us and um, it's exciting to hear what you're taking away from it yeah, thank you, Kendall. And thank you, Emily, for leading our sessions today. Um, I think on the recording, maybe what we could do is edit the portions that are the presentation, if you think, Kendall. And that way, the, the conversations that we had in the breakouts would be more private in case anybody was talking about anything confidential. You don't have to worry about that being out in the world. And then any of the resources like the slide deck or um, the ebook and those sorts of things will also send out in the email along with the presentation portion of the video. Um, and again, the other, the original talk that Kendall gave is available in, um, as a webinar on our website. And also we'll send, we can send a link to that when we send out the email to those of you who joined us today. But